Geometry Nodes is visual programming for Blender artists. You're using a visual scripting language to create procedural non-destructive systems for your objects in Blender. When you add a new Geometry Node stack here, you'll see it adds it as a modifier. And it's actually a great way to think of it because it is a modifier. If we look at these, all of these for the most part in some way can be created using geometry nodes. And if not today, then in the future. Eventually you'll probably see this modifier stack completely go away and it will just be replaced with geometry nodes. Cause as Blender evolves, they're slowly turning more and more of these pre-existing modifiers into specific nodes right here. We think of our geometry node stack just like our modifiers panel. I can add on a subdivision surface modifier and then I can add on an array modifier. You see, if I go into edit mode, our cube is still there because that's the data. That's the geometry data that's being modified by our modifiers. Traditionally, this is how modifiers, data modification works inside of Blender. The reason geometry nodes is better than this modifier stack is because you can do all of these things in the same order and more. And it allows you to use things like variables and functions to create systems that work the, like the exact way you want them to. We have a plain input and output. This is the input, which is saying right where this thing begins, even if there was some modifiers before it. So say there was like a subdivision surface before the geometry nodes, whatever this mesh data is before this, we're starting here. Right here is the starting point. So I'm not using a subdivision surface. So just so we know, this input is the starting point. It's the input, right? This is, this is the geometry that we are given based off of this geometry node stack. And this geometry is sent down this line here into the output. And this output is what is shown after the geometry node stack. Every single node is basically an action or a better word is every node is a function, right? Every node does a thing subdivision surface. This is a node that does a thing. It takes in geometry and then it outputs geometry. And then you have settings here to work with it, kind of like a modifier. So I can just drag and drop this on top of this line. It takes in the geometry from the input, subdivides it at a level of one, and then it outputs this into the output. Very simple. We did a thing. Now, just like programming, just like scripting, we can have variables. So instead of hard coding this information in here, where it's level one or level two, we can say, okay, I would like a variable to control this. So we can hit shift A, and obviously we have all of these different nodes to do things in. If you go under input, here's our, essentially our variables tab. And these are all variables that can be accessed. We're just gonna look at these inputs up here, which are just, regular values, like an integer, for example. This is no matter what this value. So just like we have an output over here that outputs a geometry from the data of this object, we have an output here, which is a different color here. We have this integer that outputs this integer, whatever this is. So if I were to plug this in to the level, nothing happens because we're feeding it this value of zero. So I can feed it a value of one and now it subdivides it one time. And now we just have this variable here that controls it. And I can hit F2 and I can rename this. And I will just call this variable amount. So this is the amount that I wanna subdivide it. Now I have this amount variable that I can reference anywhere I want and it will always stay the same. All right, cool. So how does that help? Well, so say we will move our mesh a little bit. So I can set the position of this mesh data here. And right now it does nothing. And we can offset this in any single direction. Now I can hit zero. Um, and say I want to offset this in the X axis, the amount that it's subdivided. So if it's subdivided twice, it will move two X. If it's subdivided once, it will only move one X. How do we do that? We have here an integer that we wanna connect. We have two different data types, as you can tell by the colors that are different here, right? We have this integer and we have a vector and you can always hover over them to see what data type they are. Now we need to make these compatible. So I will just use a node to do that. And again, we have another node that does a thing. 
in this case, this node's thing that it does is it converts data. I will search for combine X, Y, Z. And now this gives me access to each axis individually, which is helpful for us to determine how we want to use this data. And I said originally that I want to move this along the X axis. Now these are float values. Technically speaking, these are different data types, but you can actually use integers with float values. So if I were to connect this here, we will see that it moved it one on the X. So now our system is set up. If I go back to zero, we have our plane cube that's unaltered. If I go to one on the amount, you can see it moves it one on the X axis and subdivides it one time. If I go to two, it subdivides it twice and moves it two spaces on the X axis, three times, four times, five times, and so on. And now what we've created is essentially our own modifier or a better term is a function. We've created a function. And so let's walk through what this thing does. I know this is really oversimplifying it, but I do find that it's helpful to oversimplify this so, you, so your brain can understand exactly what's going on as you start to relate these concepts to larger project files, more nodes, more systems. So let's just take a look at this system here. We have a group input and we're taking in a geometry, which we subdivide. We subdivide this geometry we take in two times and then we're going to offset the subdivided geometry along the x-axis two times and then we output that and that's what's happening here exactly and we can call this system something we can give it a cool name for example the divide and slide that is so corny i'm sorry but just hear me out for a second we now have a function called the divide and slide right we can go ahead and save this divide and slide this is a function we can now use so if i were to get rid of this because we hit that shield we now saved that function in the current blender file we're in i can do a new geometry node system the cool thing is is now i want to use that function here go to my add menu and if you go down to group you can find your functions you've made i made divide and slide it's also accessible here in the shift a menu go down to group divide and slide and now i have made a function called divide and slide that does exactly that it takes in our group and then it slides it to but wait it always is going to slide out there's no way for me to control that variable anymore and that's because we have to think of this like programming that variable is local to divide and slide we're not passing a parameter through it which we can do just like we pass this parameter called geometry through this function we can make a parameter that we pass through for the amount so I can actually click on this and hit tab and I can go right back into this. And now we're right back into that function we created and I have amount down here, but I, I want this to be passed through as a variable. So it has to come through our input here. So I'll click on our input and I'll go to group and we can add a new input and I want an integer and I will call this integer amount. And now we have a new parameter we're passing through. But currently there's nothing, we're not doing anything with it. It's just kind of sitting here. So we'll go ahead and connect these up here. So I'll connect our level to this and I'll also connect this to the X axis. So now this variable, this local variable called amount, I can just get rid of it because we're not using it anymore. We're passing all that information up through the function. It's no longer handled at a local level. So what that means is now if I return here, we now have this amount that I can change accordingly on the function level. So now we made our new node, we made a function. And that is arguably one of the most powerful features here in geometry nodes is that we can make systems and then we can use our systems we made within other systems we make. Everything is nestable. We can nest everything together. And now I can just reuse this function as many times as I want. So say I want to just take this in again, um, we can then join these two geometries together. So I will join these two together and now I have two of them acting together. I have 
basically two divide and slides happening at the exact same time. So now what's so cool is I can just go back into this one function here, and this is going to represent all of the functions. So I can actually say, well, maybe I think it should actually move twice as far because they're kind of overlapping. So I can just say, that's cool. We'll add a math node before this, because right here, remember, this is our offset. So we're offsetting by X by this amount. I can connect this together and we can say, I just want to multiply the amount of space we're moving by two. So now anytime I make a new mo motion here, it jumps two spaces rather than one. And again, you know, we could also set this two to a variable so I can make this a new integer and we can say that's two or even better, we can connect this here and we can send this up the chain as well. We can, we can say the, the multiplier is also a parameter of this function. So we can say how much the multiplier is on an instance level, right? And we have all these other nodes here and all these other categories. Each one of those nodes is a function that does a thing, but we'll save those for the next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something about geometry nodes.